Having looked at expressions and how to manipulate expressions and simplify them, we're now going to combine expressions to form equations and look at how to solve them for what are called unknowns. Remember that an expression is just a mathematically sensible combination of numbers and mathematical symbols. An equation is actually a mathematical sentence with an equal sign joining two algebraic expressions, indicating that the two expressions are equal. Sometimes equations have in them what we call an unknown, and it's a thing that we're going to try to find out. When we solve for an unknown, we're going to perform operations in certain orders to isolate that unknown on one side of the equation. The central philosophy behind solving equations is that you need to be fair and balanced to both sides. What you do to one side, you must do to the other side. Now, here we've listed a little well, a simple little process that you can follow that works for solving some simple equations. The idea will be to remove brackets using the distributive law or expanding them, adding and subtracting any like terms that appear, and then trying to move pieces of the equation or combining them in certain ways to isolate the unknown on a particular side of the equation. Finally, we should always check our solutions by putting the value of the unknown back into the original expression to see if it's true. Let's have a look at a few examples. These examples actually can be thought of as fitting into three groups of two. So after I do question A, C and E, you might want to stop the video and try out B, D and F for yourself, following similar ideas. First of all, in A, we've got the equation t plus 5 equal to 13. What we want to do here is solve for the variable t, or in other words, isolate t and say what it's equal to by itself. I notice that the problem stopping me from saying that is that I've got a plus 5 on the left hand side. I need to, I need to get rid of that somehow. Well, the way that you get rid of a plus something is to subtract that same thing. But with equations, we need to be fair and balanced, doing the same thing to both sides. So I'm going to say t plus 5 minus 5 to get rid of it, and then remember that I have to do the same over on the other side. t plus 5 minus 5 is just t by itself, and on the right I have 13 minus 5, or 8. And in this case, that's all we need to do. t, the variable, is isolated by itself on one side, there are no t's on the other side, and I've got my result. t is equal to 8. I can check that by going back to the start and substituting that value in. If t is 8, I have 8 plus 5, which is indeed equal to 13, and the equation's true. So I'm happy with that one. Pause the video if you like, and try out a similar process for part b. Okay, a similar line of thinking would say, if I have a minus 5 obstructing me from isolating t, I want to add that 5 to both sides. So t minus 5 plus 5 is again just t by itself isolated, and on the right 13 plus 5 is 18. We can take that back, substitute in, and 18 minus 5 is indeed equal to 13. So again we've got the result that we wanted. In part c our equation says that 8x is equal to 3. Again I want to solve for the variable. Here the variable is x, so I need to get x all by itself. At the moment I've got an 8 which is stopping me from seeing x all by itself, a multiple of 8. To get rid of a multiple of 8, I need to divide by 8, and again I need to do it on both sides. So I'm going to say 8x divided by 8 on the left, and 3 divided by 8 on the right. Remembering how we simplify fractions, with an 8 on the top and an 8 on the bottom when we're talking about a product, those 8s can cancel and we're left with x on the left equal to 3 on 8 on the right. Again, you should check that you can substitute that back and get the correct result for the equation. Maybe pause now and try out d for yourself as well. Okay, the slight difference with d is that instead of a multiple, we're actually dividing by 6, and that's what's obscuring us from having x by itself. Thinking in reverse, if I want to get rid of divided by 6, I multiply by 6. So I'm going to say 6 multiplied by x on 6 on the left, and 6 multiplied by 2 on the right. I do the same things to both sides, and I don't alter the equation. I just alter its appearance. 
On the left, the whole point was that 6 times x on 6 will allow me to cancel those 6s, and I have x all by itself. On the right, 6 by 2, leaving me with 12. Again, you can take that back and check that it satisfies the equation. In part E, we take things a step further. This time, you can see that the variable is appearing on both sides of the equation. That's different from all of the ones we've looked at so far. We've also got uh, addition and subtraction and some multiples that are obscuring things. But again, the idea is simply to get all of the x's on one side and then get rid of anything that's obscuring that x. So if I have a 2x on the right that I don't want to be there, I need to get rid of it by subtracting it. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I have 6x minus 3 minus 2x, and that's going to be equal to 2x minus, uh, plus 5 minus 2x. The 2x minus 2x is, of course, going to go away, and I've got that 2x back onto the left side where I want it. 6x minus 2x is going to be 4x. Now I've got this plus 3 that I don't want to be there, because this is my x side of the equation. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. If we clean that up, we have 4x equal to 8. And finally, we can see that to get x all by itself, I need to divide by 4. I need to divide on both sides. So if I do that, I have 4x divided by 4, giving me x. And that's going to be equal to 8 divided by 4, which is 2. So you can see there was a bit more in that one. Have a go yourself now at part F. It's even a little bit harder again. Okay, even though it is a little bit harder, mainly because of this minus 9 multiplier there, we're still going to do pretty much the same things. I'm trying to get R, the unknown, all over onto the left-hand side. To do that, though, the first thing I'd like to do is expand this bracket out. Minus 9 by 1 is minus 9, and minus 9 by minus 3R is plus 27R. Now it becomes a very similar problem to part E. I'm going to subtract 27R from both sides. Which would leave me with minus 9 on the right hand side. 2R minus 27R is minus 25R. And I've got a minus 5 I want to get rid of, so I'll add 5 to both sides, leaving me with minus 9 plus 5. And finally, to get our r by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by minus 25. So r is 4 divided by 25. Once again, remember that you can check your result when you're solving equations by taking the value you find, substituting it back into the original equation, and checking that both sides are equal. Okay, so that's it for this, vid uh, this video on solving algebraic equations. Here we've described the difference between an expression and an equation, and we talked about the idea of solving for an unknown or a variable. We looked at essentially how to isolate an unknown and how to solve some of the simpler equations.